Hey everybody, I'm here to talk a little bit about uh, BlackBerry and the web and what we're doing. At a very high level, we're going to discuss browser field three. Is Brian around? Oh, he had to leave. Okay, it was just a joke. Um, it's his favorite uh, BlackBerry thing. And we're going to talk about BlackBerry in uh, open source. Uh, this is kind of something people don't expect from us, but yeah, uh, we're doing actually uh, becoming more active with open source. And we have a whole bunch of projects going on, WebWorks, which was open source a while ago, but we also have uh, something we just released called Ripple, which is a tool to do uh, mobile web application testing directly in your browser. And we have Remote Web Inspector. We've been contributing a lot to it. And then Alice. So BlackBerry loves the web. We've actually done a fairly heavy level of investments into our platform, right? What you thought of BlackBerry a year and a half ago in terms of web versus where it is right now, it's night and day, right? And not only that, but we've been doing position fix. We've been doing overscroll auto. We've been doing you know, web inspector uh, basically since the playbook came out already. So it's in market since uh, last spring and it's on all our BB7 devices coming forward. Oh, oh so sorry, yeah. Okay, is that better like this? Okay. So, and from open source point of view, we uh, open source WebWorks, it's on GitHub already from last fall. Um, the team was actually at PhoneGap's offices in Vancouver uh, just last week or two weeks ago and we contributed some of our web works for, um, for the playbook with Qnix into the uh, PhoneGap platform. So very soon you're gonna be able to use PhoneGap to build playbook applications. Um, we open source Ripple um, this week, and Alice is gonna come up in the next week or two. So let's talk about really bad uh, web works. Um, what, it's been in market since about 2009 with BB7, and it's now across all our platforms, and it's basically what allows you in you know, BlackBerry to build uh, native feeling applications but using web technologies, right? And not surprisingly, uh, when you do BlackBerry 5, 6, um, and eventually 7, and playbook applications in PhoneGap, under the covers, we're actually using uh, WebWorks to actually do all the packaging and so on. And again, it's on GitHub, um, so you can play with it, and you're welcome to participate. Kind of when we think about you know, uh, mobile application, mobile web applications, we actually think of it as a spectrum, right? Uh, people can use the web view um, uh, and basically build hybrid applications, but depending on whether you can have you know, more business logic that is nati native versus completely being browser-based, it's actually a spectrum. We're seeing a wide variety of architectures, quote-unquote, of applications on our stores. For people who use the web view just to do even half of the screen. There are applications that use the web view for just a portion of the screen and use native for like the bottom of the screen, for example, to do uh, whatever they have. They may even have all the libraries that they want to reuse. So this whole spectrum is actually quite important for us as we talk to developers. So Web Inspector, I was trying to hook it up with the network here, but I can't reach HTTP on the device. But basically, you can set up, um, yeah, and no, I don't have that, but you can set up um, Web Inspector on the playbook, and from your laptop, you can do real-time stepping of JavaScript, CSS, HTML visualization. You're basically using the actual Web Inspector tool remotely connecting into your application on the playbook. So this is really important because you can do really profound uh, mobile web debugging directly on device. And your application takes the whole screen. You don't have to share screen. You can have everything on your laptop to trace through things and it makes the whole action of debugging a lot more interesting. Um, in particular, right, the days of doing alerts everywhere throughout your code are starting to disappear, right? So Curtis, some of the stuff that you've been doing um, might, might play in there with some of the stuff we're doing with WebWorks, uh, with um, Web Inspector. Another thing that we really like right now, it's just been open source, as I said, uh, on Wednesday, so it's really fresh, it's Ripple. So here let me show you a little bit what Ripple is. Ripple today is a Chrome plugin, right? And you basically can get into a, an application.
And of course, well, no, everything is to be working. Oh, okay, here it is, right? So Ripple shows up. So the, the UI is a little bit cramped here because I'm running in a weird resolution. But Ripple comes up as a little icon. You basically enable it or disable it for a particular application. And what it does is basically load your mobile application into an emulator. This is basically an iframe, but we've done a lot more. We actually parse your application. We see what type of APIs you're using. Um, you can use different platforms. So here it discovers that it's WebWorks, but we support PhoneGap, we support uh, Opera, Vodafone, WAC. There's a whole bunch of quote unquote mobile web platforms that we support and build a tool around what you use in those APIs so you can test different factors. So one of the things, for example, let me see. Uh, it was, oh. Here it is. All right. So here is an application that comes up. Hello. No, it didn't come up. Co-host. Hmm. Did I mistype it? Okay, so let's go back to this. So I'm um, not sure what's going on, but one of the things, for example, you can change the orientation, right? Here you have support for messaging and push messages. So these actually, this, your application runs here in an iframe, and we push messages to the iframe directly to the JavaScript APIs. So we can simulate push messages coming in, messages coming in, email coming in, right? A whole bunch of things. Um, we also have, uh, you know, a choice of different devices coming in. So here's one of the bulbs, um, so on. But look, if you do phone gap, whoops, something quite interesting comes up. And this is something you wouldn't expect from uh, RIM. But basically, we have the ability to, uh, if it clicks properly, this is the, um, Why did it come up with the Chrome? Okay. So we also actually support emulation of other devices. So not just BlackBerry, right? We support iOS, we support WebOS, we support Symbian, we support, um, uh, which one I'm missing? Android, of course, right? So this is, again, very un-RIM. What we're trying to do is to create a platform for developers to test mobile applications and to do this as broadly as possible and work with the community and, commu and contributing this to the community. Uh, you can obviously see the tie-ins with PhoneGap. They're going to be pretty cool. Um, and some of the stuff we've been exploring is doing maybe a desktop port of our own browser so that what's going to run here is actually going to be the actual rendering engine that runs on our devices. So it's going to be pixel perfect in terms of uh, how it's going to be rendered. And no simulators, no uh, SDK being loaded or anything, right? You go to um, the website, you click, it installs the, uh, the, the Chrome plugin, and you're ready to go. So I wish I could show you. So let me just. ACCEL. That's the way it's supposed to be. Yeah. So it is, oh, most of it is about the acquisition in Tiny Hippos. What we've done is extended the level of devices that it support, uh, put support for web works, and then some of the things that are coming in with kind of putting native rendering engines as a plugin, so you can actually see almost as if it were the real device, some of the things we were working on. But it is a direct outcome of the Tiny Hippos uh, acquisition back in March. Oh, yeah, yeah, absolutely. So ripple.tinyhippos.com, right? You go there, get Ripple, and it will install the plugin. I mean, I already have it here, but it will install the plugin straight into Chrome, and you can start playing with it, right? And here I have my Eclipse, and I have a bunch of projects. And for some reason, maybe if I restart, 
the, my web server, right? Hello. Ah, okay. Where well, you was something in Eclipse. So here's the thing. And so, for example, here it detects that you're using the, um, you know, for that particular application. Sorry, where is the scroll bar? That it's using the accelerometer. And so you see how, oh, sorry, start. And this is, for example, how we, right, re real time, right? Now, one of the things we're doing, this is probably going to come later in the year, but we would like the ability that you take any phone. So maybe you're testing an iPhone application, but you have a BlackBerry that has an accelerometer. We, you load a page, and basically it sends events back and forth peer to peer so that you can move your phone around and it will send the API straight into your application. So trying to push the overall kind of development and testing of mobile apps, really as far as we can and take it, and make it lightweight, make it browser-based, right? So that you don't have to download 500 megabytes or crazy things in terms of, of SDKs. Yeah? Yeah. I mean, the commitment is there. Uh, it's really an issue of resources. So this tool will be formally announced at DEF CON for BlackBerry coming up in, I think, uh, mid-October. Uh, mid and hopefully, we'll have 1.0 in there. Right? And obviously, we're working very closely with the whole team uh, to make that happen. OK. So that's Ripple. And the last thing I wanted to show very quickly is Alice. So Alice is kind of a micro library to do advanced CSS3 visual effects. And one of the things that has always surprised me, uh, let me uh, disable Ripple, and then, uh oh. And one of the things that always amazed me is that, you know, the, the whole web got a major push, you know, three, four years ago with the iPhone and CSS3 and hardware acceleration, but essentially swipes, zooms, flips, fade, that's it, right? What's been going on since then? And you look at environments like Flash, you look at environments like, you know, native type of environments, and you have a lot of libraries that do a lot more interesting things. So let me show you, for example, uh, what we do with something as simple as Wobble. Right? So this is all browser. This is all 100% CSS3. And these are a whole bunch of things. I'm going to make a little bit you know, nicer angle here, make it a little bit slower, and start. Right? So this is all hardware accelerated. Went through the DOM. You named all the divs you care about. These are full divs. Right? So if I put my cursor over here, blogger, right? this is actual text. This is not just an image that we rotate around. It's a full div that we manage. So you start looking at this, and it gets a little bit, you know, gets seasick. But we have something called randomness. So one of the things we're doing is we're not just doing, you know, animation, hardware acceleration. We have physics coming in, but we have something called organics, right? The idea is that you would want some of the effects that you would want to use in your application to never quite be 100% the same. Right? The human eye is very good at dealing with, with noise right? and kind of smoothing it out. This may end up be, being more pleasing to the brain than if I have no randomness and everything rotates at the same time and you get kind of seasick. Right? And there's a lot of different parameters. So here it's based on the center. Now let me do from the top left. And let me add a little bit of randomness out of it. Right? Again, 100% CSS3. You give the div, it's one line of JavaScript. The syntax is very CSS like. So, in the panel, we're saying, you know, what we would like to see for CSS4. I 100% agree that less and SAS and all those things are a must. But it would be nice to be able to augment a vocabulary of visual effects. Right? So that it's not just about slide left, slide right, zoom, and so on. Right? So, this is wobble, and you can do a whole bunch of things, right? Uh, this was top left, but you know, bottom right. right. And you can custom. Right? That gets a little bit crazier. 
right? So that's one effect. Another effect that we like a lot is the toss. These are full, again, full forms, right? Full divs, and same concept. Here it's all random. I'm going to make them come up from a little bit lower in the thing. I'm going to make it a little bit slower, right? You see how they all come up exactly the same time in the same rate? As soon as you add a little bit of randomness, right, you start again, and they all kind of come up at slightly a different rate. And it, the result is a more, it's more pleasing for the eye and the brain. Some of the effects we're looking at, for example, is if you have a dialog box or a simple prompt to make it look like it falls from the sky, and then it's tied by a string, and there's a little bit of feedback from the accelerometer. Not too much, you don't, you know, people don't want to click on the fields and enter stuff. But something that, again, adds randomness so that it never falls, quote unquote, the same way over and over again. So that's it. That's what we're doing in open source. That's what we're doing with web technologies at RIM. Um, this is a couple of weeks from getting out. Ripple is out already. Black, uh, WebWorks has been out for almost a year now, like nine months, 10 months. And so I encourage you guys to play with this. Um, this works within your phone gap apps. Uh, we had a conversation earlier about how, you know, making web apps more beautiful. I 100% believe in that, right? That we, a lot of the times, I, saw, I, 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 I show some of those things and people say, that's not native. It looks too good or it's too smooth to be, you know, to be web. People react to how smooth an animation is. People react to interesting effects. People react to um, the aesthetics of your application very, very strongly. That's it. Thank you.